Hello everyone, Mr. Schultz here for Integrated Math 1, and we're talking about 9.8, Normal Distribution. Make sure you put your first name and your last name and your period number at the top, please. Once again, we're going to be talking about Normal Distribution. So some key concept of the Gaussian distribution or the normal distribution has uh, two main characteristics. There's other ones, but we're going to talk about it first. It is a symmetrical curve. So let's spell that out. Symmetrical curve. You can see that it is symmetrical. Left side matches right side. And it looks like a bell. So this is where the mean is going to be right here. Here's the mean right here. Here's the mean. So going on, the mean, median, and mode are equal, and they're located at the center. As the curve approaches, but it will never touch. It will always approach, but never touch the x-axis. And the total area under the curve is equal to 100%, or we're dealing with decimals. What is 100%? It's 1. All right. So those are our main things. First two are it's symmetrical and it's a bell. And then here's some other ones that we talk about as well. Okay, let's go on. So here is some information about and an example. Normal distribution or bell curve or Gaussian distribution, we have a central peak and this is where most of the, you know, it has the highest probability of the information being right here. So like average IQ, the average IQ is 100 and it's in the middle right here. Now as you increase that, it's going to be rarer and rarer as we get higher and higher. Same thing is if we get lower and lower, it's going to be less likely. So if we look at this, the y value right here is as it increases, it's going to be more likely. And as it's lower, it's going to be less likely. So let's go on. So let's go on an example of a normal curve that represents human height measurements. So looking at this, we can see that, you know, this is high probability right, right here. There's going to be low probability. And this is normally like, per, like uh, decimals, like 0 0.1, and then like this is going to be like 0 0.4, 0 0.5. And it's not going to be like percents, but that's kind of what they are. Here's our mean right here. But we don't. We're not going to write. We're not going to write down what is the mean. But this is going to be our average. So our average height is in the middle. And so the relative probability of observing someone who is really short. So really short. So really. And then we have close to average right here, and then really tall. So it's going to be like, hey, this is less likely, and really tall is less likely. And we can see that by the height of the curve. We can see the highest and most probable is the average. Now this is not going to say like somebody can't be really tall, but most likely if you meet somebody, they're going to be around this height. Unless, of course, you decide to go to a basketball game and talk to the players. Well, then their heights are going to be higher. All right, let's go on. So we have the empirical rule right here. So hold up right here. The empirical rule is about standard deviations. Everything is about so many standard deviations. So if we look right here, we say, hey, this is the mean right here. This is the mean right here. 
And then we have, this is the standard deviations. And specifically this one with the U, that's a mean of a population. So if we're talking about just data, it's the X with the, like the line above it. If we're talking about a population, it's this one right here. So this is the average right here. So let me fill in the numbers for you. So here's the first one. Within one standard deviation of mean, so within one standard deviation, plus or minus, is 68% of the data. That's kind of interesting right here. And then as we increase it, this is going to be 13.5%, and this is going to be 13.5%. So within, within two plus or minus standard deviations, that's going to be 95% of the data. So if we're talking about heights, like 95% of the population is going to be being between these two data points from here to here. That's 95% of the data. Now this last one is going to be 99.7, 99.7%. That's within plus or minus three standard deviations. I think this last one is 2.35%. And this is going to be 2.35%. And so that's not, we're not even taking into consideration what if like there's somebody even smaller than that? Well, what's left? Well, what's left is 0.3%. So if you're like really, really smart or really, really tall, you could still be within, if you're really short, That'd be 0.15%. You're really tall, 0.15%, 0 0.15% or 0 0.15% the other way. It's it's kind of interesting. Now, they're talking about, when I, I used this earlier, I talked about this. There was like a scientific discovery is when it's like five standard deviations. I do not know off the top of my head how many, what percent, that's beyond, or it'd still be 100% but like, what fraction of a percent is it going to be? All right, let's continue. So let's take a, a look at two examples right here. So looking at this, there are less options for babies in terms of height. So the curve for the baby is really tall and not as wide. So this part is really tall. The standard deviation of a baby is 0 0.6 inches. That means if we if we go if 68%, get out of there, 68% of babies is going to be like the mean is 20, 68% of the population is going to be 20.6 and 19.4. 60% of babies are in between this data. So it is very likely that a baby will be between these two, 68%. Now for adults, the average is 70, and the normal distribution, the standard distribution is four. So 68% of the population would be between these data right here. 66% and 70, 74%, be, or 74 inches, 66 inches and 74 inches. That's 68% of the data. So the width of the curve is defined by the standard deviation. If it is a larger, so larger standard deviation, that would equal a wider curve going to be wider. There's more, there's more probability. There's more um, options. And when there's more options, it's going to be wider. Babies, they tend to be one size and then they get bigger or smaller. Like, well, they don't get smaller, but when they grow up, they're going to be different options from there. All right, let's go on. So babies have a smaller standard deviation compared to adults. 
So let's figure out what the range of data for 95% of the data, the populations of babies and adults. That's two standard deviations. All right, so let's set it up. We know that the mean of the adults is 70, and the mean of babies is 20. Now, if you didn't remember, the standard deviation was 0 0.6. That's plus or minus both ways. The standard deviation of the other one was plus or minus 4 inches both ways. So if it's 2, we're going to add 8. We're going to add 2 of these to each of them. So 95% to do standard deviations uh, would, would be between 78 and 70 minus 8 is 62 inches. So 95% of the population is in between 62% and 78%. So if we're looking at it, 12, 60 divided by 12 is 5. So this is 5 foot 2 inches. And then 78 divided by, let me let me figure this out. Yeah, I think that's 6 feet 6 inches. So if you're in between and you're an adult, if you're in between 5 feet 2 inches and 6 feet 6 inches, you congratulations, you are part of 95% of the population, which makes sense. Now for babies, now if you're a baby, you're probably not watching this, but two standard deviations would be 1.2, so 1.2 more and 1.2 less. So let's do the less. 20 minus 1 is 19, minus 2 is 18.8 .8 inches. And going the other way would be 21.2 inches. So this is 95% of the data. Now, give me a second. So I just had to go look. I looked at a baby book for a second. My son it was 20.25 inches when he was born. So here's the question. Is he in the 95% in the 95% or is he outside the 95 percent. We'll go on in three, two, one. So yeah, he's within because he's between 18.8 .8 and 21.2. All right, let's go on. So let's look at another example. Men versus women in terms of height in inches. So describe the data without using actual measurements. Compare and contrast the two curves in at least three sentences. Well, looking at this, it looks like the men's curve is wider. So if it's wider, the standard deviation, now this is not a sentence, I'm just giving, putting little facts. Deviation of men is more. So this is not a sentence, I'm just writing a fact out. I'm bullet pointing. All right, so it looks like that the mean or the average of women is less. I could also make a car, um, I could also describe it and say, hey, look, there is less deviation. So women has, so the standard deviation, the standard deviation of women is less so that so there is less options so it looks like hey look there's a more probability that a woman will be and it's about 64 inches so that's five feet four inches so Probability wise, it looks like it looks like it's sixty almost sixty percent. That win will be about five five feet four inches. Well that's just this example. Is it true? Well, if you did your research and you chose heights of people at Savannah, does it look like this graph? Alright, let's go on.
Now, don't forget on yours, I want you to write this in three sentences. Go ahead and try and write this. We're going to go on in three, two, one. All right, so last one right here. So a normal distribution, here's this graph right here, and if it says, hey, the mean is 455, then we probably write it right here. And then if it says the standard deviation is 24, after we draw this out, what we'd want to do is we'd want to figure out what is the stand, what number do each of these go at? Well, 24 plus this would be 479. If I add another 24, that would be 503. If I add another 24, that would be 527. If I subtract by 24, I would get 431. If I subtract by another 24, I would get 407. And if I subtract by another 24, that would be 383. So remember that, hey, the information here, this is 34%, this is 34%, this right here is 13.5%, and this right here is 2.35%, it's going to be 2. Point, oh no, this is 13.5%, and this is 2.35%. If you're going to answer these questions, find the percent of the data between 407 and 455. Well, that's as simple as adding these together. Go ahead and figure that out. And then when it says, hey, what percent of the data is greater than 479? Well, basically you could take 50% and then, hey, what isn't the part of the data? Subtract this out. 50% minus that. All right, go ahead and show your math right here. And I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you guys in class. Bye.